we have another quick and dirty test and this time I'm gonna take a look at the analog output of a power amplifier and this uh, this is the Bryston power pack 300 it's I guess an SST2 or maybe an SST3 version I'm not sure at all uh, we use the balanced input we use the speaker output uh, in an 8 ohm dummy load and that goes into the prism D scope the output of the prism is of course used to put in a signal and we will connect the Bryston to the normal grid at first and then we will use a power conditioner in between and see what happens to the noise it's quite a simple test just like the previous one you seem to like these kinds of lab alpha lab videos so uh, I guess uh, we'll try to create a series and see what happens uh, okay power it on and I need to cool this thing because it will get hot quite soon even and I don't want to blow up the power amp so I'm sorry for the noise but that's how it is you see that it creates a uh, signal I have set the FFTs quite high so I'm um, gonna put that down a little bit otherwise it will be really slow this is a little bit faster now okay this is good enough for this test so the principle is actually the same uh, a lot of people say yeah you need to measure at the analog output of a DAC preamp whatever and at the speaker output of a power amp well we take feedback pretty serious so I try to create a test for power conditions for a long time now and uh, I can measure the grid it will make a difference these things do filter they're not empty boxes this one from Yeti Acoustics is actually really heavy oh, this is the reference okay I thought it was the oh no no that's there, there's a this is the luxurious version it's not the top model uh, yet he creates and we have a Isotec Aquarius Evo 5 this is 2500 euros this is not sure I think it's around three or three and a half thousand euros I have to ask uh, Thijs for that I'm not confident enough to say the price but uh, I wanted to know what these devices will do to a power amp we have a Bryston we use for speaker measurements and all kinds of stuff and I thought you know what let's just see what happens at the speaker output so this is the base level uh, noise from this power amp you see it's not really clean I mean it's it's good it's minus 120 dBs right here but it's not completely clean uh, and this is just in the wall socket so I'm gonna create a copy this is now copied and I'll change the color now let's just keep it that way and now I'm gonna attach it to this filter is this good? yeah that's correct no it's not correct no. it needs to be turned around so now this filter is connected to the wall and the power amp is now connected to the filter and let's see what happens holy moly that's gone you see the 50 Hertz is lower this is gone and this spike is gone as well this is measured at the speaker output so we create a copy now it even it's even lower now as you can see let's create a new copy because this one is not good enough so you can say whatever you want but power conditioners actually do something on the speaker output you see these spikes are still there they're probably in the transistor the, the amps make noise but this was all power grid noise that got amplified by the amplifier itself and 
uh, they were at minus 107 this one around minus 107 and it all these noisiness all this noise is now actually gone so uh, that's the, the Yeti power conditioner it makes a huge difference and um, especially with higher end amplifiers that have even lower noise floors. I mean this Bryston is already a very good amp. Bryston creates very stable powerful amplifiers uh, but the 50 Hertz hum here is completely gone. I mean it was minus 90 it's now minus 110 that's 20 decibels lower that's incredible actually uh, and all these spikes are gone as well so that's the Yeti now we need to check out the uh, Isotec Aquarius and that one has two outputs actually there is a um, high current and there is a low current output this thing is extremely heavy so I'm gonna put that on the floor because on the other table it will just crush the table I'm not sure what it weighs but maybe Thijs is that big because he has to carry all these ridiculously heavy power conditioners um, so this is the Aquarius 5 it's the newer version and uh, it has high current and low current outputs first we're gonna try the high current output as you can see here uh, it needs to stabilize a little bit yeah there we are that amplifier needs to power up so don't draw conclusions too fast but as you can see it works in another uh, frequency spectrum and that's really fun to see uh, this is I'm not sure it does it there are more devices that uh, give spikes and then disappear and give spikes and disappear something on the grid the Yeti filter got rid of it the Aquarius doesn't um, but as you can see here it did actually got rid of some spikes so let's copy this one and see what happens these were all there already um, as you can see the gray spikes are there already but uh, some stuff got filtered out so it does do something in the mid frequencies on the speaker output it's not as heavy as the Yeti though it doesn't do that much it got rid of some stuff here it lowered some spikes here and some spikes here but overall it did a lot less than the uh, Yeti filter this is the high current output let's see what it does on the low current output the uh, principle is by the way a lot different this is a parallel filter construction uh, which doesn't kill your dynamics the Yeti is a complete galvanic isolation of the grid so it has a huge transformer inside that uh, can handle up to a thousand watts that one that's why it's so heavy but it yeah you can see it's more effective in lower frequencies maybe the Aquarius does something more in the higher frequencies we measured them earlier but on the speaker output up to 96 kilohertz I didn't see a lot of difference but maybe now it does uh, let's kill that one and kill that one and see what happens and then we can do this get rid of this and then see see the low low current output does more in the higher frequencies but maybe it needs more filtering so for sources it doesn't matter uh, but for power amps maybe the filtering is too much which is why it could kill dynamics uh, but it does do some stuff right there uh, so yeah there is a difference in the low and the high current output 
the high current output is just not that effective but we can see right here that it did kill some spikes again not as much as the uh, Yeti filter which killed practically all noise <laughs> but we didn't listen to it yet so uh, there is yeah you can see here it killed that spike uh, but all in all, I just wanted to show you that power conditioning is not a bunch of bollocks. It, they do actually filter out stuff. I measured the speaker output and it did lower the noise floor on the speaker output. Especially the uh, Yeti filter with its galvanic isolation did lower the noise floor in the in the spectrum. There is one more filter I want to show you because there's also a Titan and uh, I'll grab the Titan right now because the Titan is specifically made for power amplifiers. The Aquarius is more of a solution for sources I think. Can you still see it? Yeah it's visible. Um, and this is the Titan and it does a lot more so it needs to stabilize let's give it some time yeah there we go okay and as you can see already it does more than the Aquarius for this power amp still though that high-end spectrum <laughs> is not as good as the Yeti in terms of noise floor that is uh, sonically uh, I do like the Titan a lot but it does a lot in the mid-range and uh, up to uh, yeah I don't know uh, six kilohertz and very low already as you can see here uh, this is 200 Hertz and it killed this spike, this spike, this, this. It's it's a lot more silent than uh, than without, because well, the gray one is the the graph without any conditioning, and this is with conditioning. And as you can see, up to from from 200 hertz to 6 kilohertz, it already uh, squashed a lot of spikes, and the spikes that are in there maybe are from the uh, tone generator the harmonics in the amplifier itself. We can see maybe with this one, the blue. Let's kill this one. Yeah, see the blue one is the, no, 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 that's not correct. Yeah, the blue one is the Yeti and the yellow, no, this is the, I need this one. I need to copy this and then kill this, okay. Uh, or well pink pink one is the the Titan and the blue one is the Yeti but as you can see in the mid-range they're quite similar the Titan and the Yeti filter but in the higher even well the Titan is even a little bit cleaner in the mid-range but in the higher frequencies the uh, Yeti wins in terms of power conditioning and uh, low lower noise floors so this was a quick and dirty test of power conditioners on the speaker output of a power amplifier and what I just wanted to show is not a winner because we didn't compare them in, in, in real life in terms of sound but I just wanted to show you that this is not a fake product like a lot of people say they don't do anything it's not measurable yes it is measurable you just need to know how you measure it and where to look and this was on the analog speaker output of a Bryston power amp that already handles noise pretty well so uh, imagine what it can do to your amplifier or your source it's not it's not fake these products actually do something but yes it differs per product and there are products power conditioners out there that don't do anything at all uh, but yeah we review them this way we check out how they work uh, if they actually do something we post those uh, measurements in the articles in the reviews um, but yeah this is how we do it
Thank you for watching. See you next time.